Hi guys, Library here. Um, today is bottling day. So, got my hydrometer, my turkey baster, bottling wand here, ready to uh, sanitize. Um, all my bottles out, obviously, it's all ready to wash. And I uh, just wanted to show you something. Uh, I don't have quite enough uh, delabeled bottles, so going through the delabeling process right now. What I do, just soak them in some water. I, I get the get the kettle on. If um if your hot water's not up to the task, what it does, it helps melt all of that uh glue or whatever they use to stick it on. And get them let it be a nice, nice clean label removal. And see that? It's actually pretty good. I'm actually surprised with this one. It's going so well. Uh, this bottle's, uh, every bottle's different to be honest. Um, you get some where the labels just like float off when you soak them. Uh, this one, I thought it was gonna be more of a problem actually. But it's coming off nicely. I always give it a pre-rip so the uh, water's gonna get in. Sometimes the labels are a bit like, well, I say plasticky, but they, they put like a coat on them and um, makes the half of the water to get in, penetrate down to that, uh, adhesive glue level. But yeah, this one's gone pretty well. Look at that. It's only been in there for about 15 minutes. Just give it a quick little little wipe and that one will be clean. And the second bottle I've got, like I said, the labels just float off. Look at that. This is from a wheat beer and they just come off. You get the occasional little bit that sticks, but that slides slide right off there. To get a good soap, warm water as hot as you can and just give them a good old scrub get any little bits of residue left on them um, yeah so that is label removal usually a really boring task because um, you know batch of beer I do 10 litre batches at the moment that's about 20 bottles uh, normal batch volume uh, Standard really is uh, 20 litres when you buy the kits, they usually come in 20. And uh, you know, that's 40 bottles you've got to take the labels off. So, if you find a bottle like like the wheat beer one I just had, look how clean that is. Wheat beer labels, usually uh, German beers, they're all kind of the same type of label, they're more papery, the water penetrates them easily, gets the glue off. Uh, sometimes you'd be surprised like this one, that uh, came off not as easy, but fairly easy. Chuck that in the bin. And, uh, yeah, that's your label removal. Right now on to bottling. Where's my brush? Oh, lift it over here. There we go. Get your brush, get in there, give them all a good old scrub. It's quite a tight fit. Get it in. There we go. Force it in. Get a little scrub around. Don't get any residual beer. Uh, sometimes some beers have a yeast to them, especially in my home brew, so I have a bit of yeast on the bottom. So you want to get all of that out, all the debris, a nice clean bottle. And once you've done that, you want to sanitize them. Got some sanitizing solution. What I'll do is I'll put that in there in each bottle, give it a swirl around. Because it's no rinse, I don't need to faff with rinsing around. And then I'll just let them drip dry. And that's, that's your bottles ready for priming. And then once they're primed, you can bottle them, cap them. So, I won't bore you with the rest of these. It'll take bloody ages. But, uh, see you in a minute. Right, now. Gloves on for this part because um, this sanitizer stuff is acidic and then make your hands a bit sore. But uh, what we'll do now, all these bottles are washed. I've already done a couple, well, more than a couple. And what I do, once they're washed, I get my little turkey baster, get a couple of pumps of sanitizer, and a good shake. That's it. That's sanitised. All I have to do is pour that out. I'll let them all 
sit for a bit whilst they fill them up. And that's your bottles, cleaned and sanitised. Next step is priming. So once you've poured all this out, you're going to stick your sugar in bottles. And then, and then it's ready for the beer. Also got everything else in this bucket here. Sanitizer. Got my hydrometer. Uh, hydrometer, bottling ones. I've got a funnel, I've got all my bottle caps in the bottom. There we are, all my bottle caps. Actually, I go a bit over with bottle caps, so it says what? 20 bottles, I always do like three or four extra because they're fiddly and I tend to drop them. And uh, at that point, you don't want to be faffing around sanitising. You just want to get the caps on your bottles. So that's that there. Big old boring job washing the bottles. But uh, important. You don't want to end up with dodgy beer because you haven't, you just, you can be bothered with the step. Cleaning, sanitizing. There we go, all of them done. Now once you're done, just give them a drink, just leave that you. Give them a nice soak, pour them back in. That's it, sanitized. Duh. Amazing. Right, now, all of these bottles have been clean, sanitized. They're just ready to prime. So, give me a little just drug dealer scales out again. Get a little, uh, Alcohol measure, any, anything small basically. And um, what we want today is two and a half volumes of CO2, which is about 3.3 grams of sugar per bottle. Depends on the bottle size, obviously. These are uh, 500 millimeters, so you have to go and check. Uh, this, I use a primer calculator online. 3.5, whoopsie. Not paying attention. So you go on the line, um, there's lots of priming calculators on there. Uh, you put in like the size of the vessel, so but in this instance it's 500. Uh, some people like to batch prime, so you can say, oh I've got um, a 10 litre, 20 litre batch, so 20 litres of beer, and it'll give you how much sugar, and you can put it in the beer that way. I like to do it in the individual bottles, because I find it gives more consistent results. It might be a bit more fiddly, but you know, I think it's better. A little bit better for me, you know. It's all good. If you like doing it the other way, you do it that way, it's fine. Three point three, there we go. So that's uh, seventeen more like these, three. And then we're ready to bottle. Okay, we're doing 2.5 in this one because it's a um, it's a pale ale IPA type American -y beer. So moderate fizziness, not too over the top. Oh, that's 3.5, not 3.3. Okay. And it should be a nice beer, you know. You don't want it too low carbonated, like a bitter, because it'll be too smooth. It, you know, doesn't give the right feel. But it depends on your beer. Also, it depends on your vessel size, how much sugar you put in. But use online calculators. It will give you your specific amount. So don't just do what I'm doing because I'm doing it. Do you do you? <laughs> so yeah, seventeen more like that, then we'll start bottling. Okay, so we've got all the bottles primed over here. 3.3 grams of sugar each. Just ready to bottle now. So, some lovely, clear looking beer here. Let me take a last gravity reading. Just beforehand, just to be sure. Let's start fermenting. So, like this. You can see how clear it is now as well. Look at that, crystal clear. I've actually left this. Um, in the fermenter, Ooh, whoopsie, a bit of bubbles there. Uh, I left it in the fermenter a bit longer than I not normally would because I've been a busy boy. As you can see by my clothes, I've been decorating the house, and I am actually currently doing it. 
which we'll take. Uh, yeah, so this has been left to its own devices. And what's happened is, uh, the longer it's left, the more yeast is going to clear up and settle to the bottom, which is what you want in your final beer. And to be honest, at this stage, it's still pretty good because there's still a lot of yeast in the beer, even though it looks clear. There'll be a ton. You know, you only need a few cells and there's millions, billions, in fact, of uh, yeast cells in your beer. Okay. Put this down. Make sure it's on the level. Right, that final ground of tea. Smells the part. A little bit yeasty still, smelling, but it'll be good in a few weeks. Now, got the bottle in one dom. This does is it stops it blowing out. When the tap's open, and then all you do, press the bottom with the bottle, and it comes out, fills it up, leaves a nice little bit of headspace for our cap, and that will um, bore the CO2 to go into. a really nice little bit of equipment for bottling ones. Beforehand I used to have to just open the tap, close the tap between each bottle, but this way fills from the bottom, goes up, uh, does less agitating of the beer so you don't get any, well you get a bit of oxygen this way, but less so and then if you were using the tap and um, having it just pouring through the top of the bottle, splashing around at the bottom, Smells like honey, this a little bit. Quite nice. All it is, this beer, is um, Maris Otter. Maris Otter base malt, because it's a smash to single malt, and chinna hops. It's um, a good way to test out different types of malts or different types of hops uh, or different yeasts basically this take this beer we've made today and if you change one ingredient and then compare the two beers like the one ingredient you've changed is what's changing the flavor obviously so you get to get to grips with different ingredients so you know you change the hops out this is chinna, it's got some nice pininess to it and stuff. Uh, you can put citra in, more citrus, you know, and you'll notice the difference. Uh, mosaic, that's quite a fruity one. Used that before. Galaxy, that's another tropical fruity one. You know, you just try different hops, it will give you a different profile. Same with the base malts. You're not going to get too much from your base malts, to be honest, but you will notice a the difference. There's like Pale, extra pale Maris Otter I'm using. Um, there's some darker ones like Vienna. That's a good tasty base malt. And the idea with these smash beers, you get to get to grips with all of them. And it will make you, well, hopefully make you a better brewer. You'll definitely find out what you like, that's for sure. So. I've done a few before, I like Maris Otter. So that's why I'm using Maris Otter today. I like Chinook, another reason to use it. It gives me a nice uh, American pale ale, this beer one. Nice and simple, no faffing around, you don't have to sort out a recipe really, just hop additions, that's, you know, the timing. You could dry hop it if you want. Um, I'm not too big a fan of dry hopping because I find it uh, takes a bit to clear. Let's show you how 
hopefully that looks in there. See all the way to the bottom, you can see that yeast. How it settled out. Right, so that's uh, 19 bottles of uh, Chinook Smash, a little tester glass, which normally I pour it into the last bottle, but actually had just enough. There's that. The clearness, look at that. Lovely. Mm. Yeah, not bad. Needs to condition a bit, but um, pretty nice already. Now I've just got to cap all these. So, just quite simply with these, put the cap on, put all cap on. Top and push down. It's quite stiff, we need some good force on that. Made for you know, the leverage and all that. That's what it's made for. So, what I do, I give these a little test, make sure they're secured, make sure they're not like you know, twisting when you twist them. Let you know that there's a good seal there. <laughs> So none of that gas is going to escape, or beer if you have them on this side, I suppose. Probably not the best surface to do it on. Wobbly kitchen sink, but hey hey, we've already started. Yeah, simple as that. 17 more to go, and that's our beer done. Um, once it's done, we've just got to leave it somewhere for two weeks. The, for the yeast and the primer sugar yeah, to do its magic, and you'll have um, your beer ready. That's it. Oh, it is just a different bottle. What you find is every bottle you have ever so slightly different. Like this one's got that little top there, so the same. Same principle with the uh, the labels on the bottles. Some bottles you'll find the labels are impossible to get off, and it's just not worth it. So you know, just chuck them. Um, I found Brewdog. They have really impossible labels. But, you know, it's great for Brewdog. They make nice labels and whatever, but it's like I don't know. It's like super super good cement. Spend about an hour on a bottle, a single bottle, scraping it with a knife, getting the label off, there's like a film on them, like all sorts. So it's just not worth it. I did a load of them back in the day when I needed the bottles, but. I found out there were better ones. The same with um, capping, um, hot bubbling bottles. Impossible to cap. So after you've gone through the trouble of yeah, removing the labels, cleaning the bottles, you've got this dodgy cap on that, that little bit there, it's just really rounded. But, uh, you know, you'll find out the best bottles and acceptable ones. Recordedly, these are pretty good. The labels fly off. The bottles are actually quite clear as well as so you can see the beer through clear it's good for pouring. But yeah, personal preference to be honest on beer, so you buy the beer you like and if it's got good labels, all the better. Or you know, you could buy some homebrew bottles, but they usually cost about the same as a beer. And you don't get any beer in them, it's just an empty bottle, so you know. <laughs> I'm all about that value, you know. If I buy a bottle and happy to have beer in it, it's even better. But yeah. That's that. I won't bore you with the rest because they are tedious and boring, but give those two weeks to carve up and uh, we'll crack one open. Okay, guys, so that is 19 bottles of my Chillix Smash bottled up. 
uh, and a cheeky little test area, which um, wouldn't have been a bottle, so you know, might as well drink it. Um, what we do now, we'll leave these for two weeks to carve up. Um, I say another two weeks after that to condition, but going by this one, probably doesn't need it. So two weeks to carve up, test one out, see if they're ready, and then just pop them away somewhere. Stick them in the fridge, ready to drink. Uh, if you like my video, um, like it obviously, subscribe, click the bell, leave me a comment, um, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Good. Yeah. See ya. Hey DJ, give me a beat. It's the Lion Blue Show. Cook two. Do some gun and foraging stuff. Terrible raps. Like to subscribe and all that crap.